through the extra point. This is Eric McKinney joined by Greg Katz. Greg, this coming Saturday, we were supposed to be watching USC and Alabama down in Texas. We're not going to be able to watch that. In your mind, how was that game going to play out? Okay, well, I guess I should stick with what I wrote in the past. I think Alabama would win by at least, uh, I'm going to say, 17 points. Uh, the big difference between the two teams is the style of play, the physicality, the talent level, and most of all, the big difference in offensive lines. Uh, Alabama has an NFL talent from tackle to tackle led by Alex Leatherwood, who was really on USC's campus at one time uh, at one of the uh, Rising uh, Stars camps. And when I saw him, it reminded me of why Alabama is so dominant. Uh, remind me of the days when I would go down to USC and I would see guys like Brad Buddy and Bruce Matthews and uh, Anthony Munoz and uh, Pat Howell, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, when you have an offensive line like that, you, you do a lot of things. Plus, let's remember, uh, when you have running backs like, like Alabama has, Najee Harris, another California guy that uh, left our state to go play uh, at Alabama, they would just – it may not – the game might have been semi-close in the first half, but I think that they would, in the end, uh, talent, coaching, et cetera, they, they would win going away. And plus, I want to say this. Alabama would have been very motivated after last year's disappointing 11-2 and two season and no national championship run. Uh, they would be out to make a big statement. And uh, I think SC probably would say to themselves, we want to test ourselves. But from my opinion, be careful what you wish for. And uh, certainly when they signed that contract after the 2016 game, uh, figuring in four years, Clay Helton's program would be taking off and, you know, we, we'd be able to basically battle on a talent level. Well, it hasn't turned out that way. And to me, it had all the earmarks of a, a very, uh, should we say, unproductive Saturday at Jerry Jones's Dreamland Stadium in Arlington, Texas. See, I think it would have been extremely productive. I, I think that it was going to give us a, a real sense. And, and I guess before I get into it, I should say, I, I couldn't imagine a scenario where USC goes and, and wins that game. I think they would have kept it close. I, I think it would have been a, a good game. But, but talking about how it would have been productive, I think it, it was kind of one of the games on the schedule that was going to give us a real sense of where this team was. I mean, they, they had – they would have had again it's all it's all hypothetical uh they would have had the, the whole off season to kind of prep and, and talking to the players over the the spring and summer they were really looking forward to it they, they really thought based on kind of the the way these this new coaching staff came in and what they were able to do starting in january and working forward they saw themselves kind of turning that corner and they saw alabama as a challenge that they were ready to take on Again, without having seen them on the field, there's no way that I can say, yeah, they're going to go down to Texas and, and beat Alabama, uh, just based on kind of what the two programs have done over the last couple of years. But boy, I, I would have expected this team to be able to go down there and keep it close and then, you know, react based on whatever happened to, okay, that's, that's maybe not where we thought they were, or maybe they're ahead of schedule. I, I think Todd Orlando has proven that he can get defenses, veteran defenses, which USC certainly would have had this year. He can get them ready to go quickly. And I think that offense would have been able to challenge Alabama's secondary, which teams have been able to throw a little bit on, on Alabama in the past. So while I can't fully go ahead and, and flip all the way over and say, oh yeah, USC would have, would have gone down there and won. It, it was a game that this year, you obviously are, are disappointed missing out on seeing USC Notre Dame, seeing USC UCLA, but boy, that Alabama game was one that I was really looking forward to, to be able to say, this was the test and what, what are your grades now from, from this test? This is not a, a warm up or anything. This is kind of proof of where you are uh, as a program. So again, a, a big loss uh, that we're not able to see 
how that game actually plays out. Well, I, I think you make some really good points. Um, my fear is from a coaching standpoint, recruiting standpoint, risk reward. You know, the Trojan for take into consideration that the last time we saw the Trojans play was in December and they were getting waxed by Iowa. Not a good sign, uh, you know, in the Holiday Bowl. The controversy of Carol Folt coming in as president, Mike Bone is athletic director, and uh, there wasn't a change of head coach. And that decision was made before the Holiday Bowl. So already people were going, what are they thinking? And then you have the Holiday Bowl disaster, debacle, whatever you want to call it. And then you're going to go into an off season and you're going to start off with Alabama. So yeah, if they play them really close and you know, I, I know they don't, they don't win, you could say moral victory, but if things would go the way I thought they would go, I can't even imagine what the outrage would be with quote, the Helton controversy, the Iowa disaster, and then getting blown by Alabama that would not, uh, to me, be worth the risk. But that's just my perspective. 